several times in my different videos, I have told you not to throw away the carcass when you've roasted a chicken, or the bone when you've done a ham, or better yet, beef bones when you've had something really fabulous that, that you got to keep the bones. The reason is, you can use those to make stock. And stock is one of the most potent magic tools you can have in, in your kitchen. In this case, all I did this morning was salt down a chicken, throw him in for an hour, first at 500, then at 450 degrees. Pulled all the meat off of it, and this is what I'm left with. See, come here, come here. This is the good stuff. This is where good cooks become great cooks, believe it or not. All right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take all the stuff that's left over from roasting the chicken, and we're going to come over here and put them in the pan. And we're also going to add, wait a minute, I'm sorry, come back here. We're going to add some of the bits and pieces that came in the inside of the chicken, but not everybody. All right? We're going to ditch the heart. That's just, you know, eh. That's liver. That will make it have kind of a strange flavor. It's very strong and it has its own uses, but this is not one of them. They're going to go away. This, I'm pretty sure, is a gizzard, but these collectively are known as the giblets. So get rid of the dark stuff. Keep all this. This is the neck. Normally, I throw that on the roasting pan when I'm roasting the chicken. This time, I just wanted y'all to see what it looked like. Okay? So, all right, here we're going. We're going to the stove. Now, if you're going to make a stock, and this is super easy. There's really not, not a whole lot to it. If you're going to make a stock, and you want the simplest, most basic chicken stock in the world, use the carcass from a roast chicken. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have any extra ingredients. You're making every penny that you've paid for this chicken work for you. All these bits and pieces are going to go in here. We're going to cover it with a little bit of water. And you only want to barely cover it. We're going to bring it almost, but not quite, to a simmer. And then he's just going to sit there doing his own thing while we go play and do something else. Now, a lot of times you will see recipes and methods calling for separating the fat from all the roast vegetables. You know what? All this beautiful water that we're going to add to this pot is going to do that kind of work for us. Okay? So everybody's in here. Now, I have this great big silver pot sitting here because this is a great example of I want you to do something I'm telling you to do and not do what I'm doing. And here's why. This is actually a stock pot with a pasta strainer insert. If you make stock, you want a taller vessel than it is wide. It will help keep the evaporation to a minimum while it's cooking and you won't have to keep adding as much water. The cool thing is you can do the first strain just by lifting it out. However, I wanted y'all to be able to see down into my pot. Okay? Now, well, when stuff just works out just exactly the way it's supposed to. Come here. Alright, you see this? You see how these bubbles are coming? See how fast those are? That's too fast. You see these over here? There's almost lava. You want lava, if anything. So we're going to turn this down. We're going to keep an eye on it for another minute or two until we make sure that the most we have is lava. All right, here's the other thing. This is how easy this is. I was getting ready to make chicken pot pie, and I had the bits and pieces and ends off some vegetables. I threw them in here. See, it's not rocket science. All right, so all of this white foamy stuff. Oh, hello. <laughs> all of this white foamy stuff. I forgot the name of it. It's a protein. We want to get rid of it. You know, it won't kill you. It's ugly, and it makes the broth cloudy, and the flavor won't be as clean. So don't go nuts trying to get every little bit. Now, if you have a deeper pot, like the one I showed you, you're supposed to be using, and you can put a little more water than I have, which you probably should, um, the water will actually allow all this stuff to come together on the top in one piece. They call it a raft, which I think is kind of cool because it's a raft for catching all the icky stuff. Okay? So you want to skim that off of there. Now here's the other thing you want to kind of do, if you have time, if not, you can do it later. See this? How I can go just barely skim the surface? That is all chicken fat. Now, <laughs> that is a whole nother video because that is where you can get schmaltz, which is one of the most brilliant things ever devised, ever. But, in this case, we're making chicken stock. So all we're going to do is skim that. And you want to keep this from happening where it's boiling too much, because you know what that does. If it moves that quickly, all of the oil will begin to emulsify into the liquid of the stock, 
Well, that's lovely if you're making a vinaigrette or salad dressing or mayonnaise, but you don't want that in your stock. You want the oil to stay separate. So all I'm going to do is let him continue to sit here at a bare simmer, keep a little water eye on it so I make sure the water is deep enough, and I'm going to skim off the rest of the foamy stuff. After that, I'm walking away for an hour or two, just make sure it doesn't boil, and it will take care of itself. Alright, if you have time to let this go for three or four hours, great, go ahead, because it's just going to get richer and more fabulous the longer you let it sit. Matter of fact, you can even throw it in a 200 degree oven and walk away from it entirely once you've got all that protein stuff skimmed off the top. But, this has had about an hour, quite possibly a little bit less. And I happen to have to pick up my children, and we've got soccer games, and I have to get their supper ready, so I don't have time to mess with it. I'm not going to. I am going to wrap this up right now. So this is a fat separator. If you don't have one or can't find one, it's not really a big deal. You simply skim what you can off the top with a spoon like I showed you, and then once you chill it, the fat will come to the top and solidify, and you just pop it off of there. It's cool. It sets itself up to be low fat, which I love. So the fat comes to the top and you can pour the stock out of the bottom. See? Isn't that nice? So you have this little bit here which I just tip back into the pan. I let the stock get started. Now, when you're making stocks, if you read recipes, they'll tell you strain it through cheesecloth. Well, I can't ever find cheesecloth. What I can find are either cheap 100% cotton handkerchiefs or 100% cotton, make sure it's cotton, and make sure it's been washed a few times so that it doesn't give you fuzzies. It's just a cheap cotton washcloth. The cool thing about that is you can wash it, use it over and over again. Now the fat I'm bringing over here and I'm just going to get rid of. Okay? So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to do the rest of the pot real quick. I'm going to strain it into my separator. I'm going to let the fat come off of it. I'm going to pour it through my cheesecloth. And I'll show you once we're all done the little lovely that we've gonna that we're gonna have to cook with. All right, that's it. That's all there is to it. I strained it off. I removed as much of the fat as the fat separator would allow, and this is what I have left. I have all of this beautiful, rich, golden, delicious chicken stock. Now you know I've said over and over and over again, taste everything, and in this case I did. Now I will say with a stock, one thing you want to keep in mind is it should be under seasoned at this point unless you're going to have it just like it is, which, you know, I've done that quite often. The reason is, is you want to be able to control the salt in the final recipe. This allows you to do it. And if you used a roasted chicken or one that you had brined, then there's going to be a good bit of salt in there. So be careful with that. Don't salt it until you're ready for the next application. Now, almost all the fat has come off, but you see, I've got just a little bit left right up here. That's not a big deal. For one thing, when I stick this in the fridge, all of the gelatin that came out of the connective tissues in that carcass are going to thicken this up and give it a little more body. The fat on top is also going to solidify and I'll be able to pop it right off. But you know, fat means flavor and that much to this much stock, I'm not worried about it. So I'm about to make chicken pot pie and use it just the way it is. One final note, you know, collar means flavor. This is commercial canned chicken broth and this took us maybe a total of 10 minutes of effort. Not only did we utilize every penny that we paid for that bird, we got every scrap of flavor that we can manage out of it. So, would you rather have that or this if color means flavor? That's a no-brainer. And when you cook with this, you are absolutely going to look like the best chef ever. So give it a try. It takes almost no time and very little effort and you'll look really good. <laughs>